Shortly after I had my fourth baby, I started to feel really overwhelmed with life. I was so tired. I was so exhausted. Life was so full. And it was about this time that this new little phrase started popping up everywhere. Choose joy. It was on t-shirts, it was on plaques, and yes, of course, it was on mugs. Not today. I just can't muster up the willpower to just choose joy in the midst of this chaos because all I really wanted was a nap and for somebody by the name of Mary Poppins to show up at my house, snap their fingers, and clean up the entire mess that I was living in. My name is Lisa Cotter and this is Ascension Presents. And so I brought this to prayer and I was basically arguing with the Lord. I was like, listen, why can't I just choose joy? Why can't I just find the good? Why can't I just let go? So what? It's chaotic. And over and over again, I just kept saying, why can't I? Why can't I? Why can't I? And then God pushed the pause button. He pushed the pause button for me and something was put on my heart and it was simply St. Paul and his thorn. You see, I think what God was trying to prompt me and remind me of was this story of St. Paul in 2 Corinthians. You see, he's explaining to the Corinthians that there's something going on in his life that's a thorn in his side. And he says, three times I begged the Lord to take it from me. Three times Paul asked God, like, listen, this is too much. It's too hard. I don't want this anymore. Can't you just take it away from me? And in that moment, God's response was not, hey, Paul, just choose joy. God's response was my grace is sufficient for you. Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. See, here I was going on and on about why can't I, why can't I, and God was like, no, 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 it's not about you, Lisa. It's about me. I will give you what you need. I will be your joy. I will be your strength. I will be what it is that you need to get through this if you will receive my grace. You see, I had to let go of the idea that I just had to choose it and realize that what I needed was to receive it to receive it from the Lord. And see, here's the reality. This is one of the secrets of the saints. The saints knew how to do this. They knew how to receive from God. And one of my favorite people that exemplify this is servant of God, Chiara Corbella Patrio. So here she is, Chiara Corbella Patrio. This was done by my friend, Leanne Bowen, and she chose, no, no, she didn't choose. She lived joy. She lived and received joy. See, Kiara and I, we were born about five months apart. So she's a modern day saint. And I think that's part of the reason I love her so much is her life is so relatable to mine. So Kiara and her husband Enrico met while on pilgrimage and they kind of had this on again, off again, modern romance where they were like, should we get married? Should we not? I don't know. This is big. This is scary. And finally they just said, we're going to do it. Let's just do it. So they get married and shortly after getting married, God blesses them with their first child and they're so excited and they start planning for the gift of this child. They start preparing, they're overflowing with joy about this presence, this new life. And then halfway through the pregnancy, the doctors come to Kiara and they say, Kiara, we're so sorry. Kiara, we're looking at, at, at the scans of your baby and something's not right. Kiara, this baby's not going to be able to live outside of the womb. This baby, it, it's just, it's not developing properly. When they're born, they're gonna die pretty closely after. We're so sorry. And Kiara said, you know what? This is my baby. I will do everything I can to give this child life. And that's what she did. Baby Maria was born and a half hour later, baby Maria died. She was baptized and she was sent back to the hands of her father in heaven. Shortly after, Chiara and Enrico became pregnant again, and they were so excited, and they were rejoicing, and they were thanking God, and they were praising Him for the gift of new life. But as the pregnancy progressed, the same conversation came back up again. Halfway through the pregnancy, the doctors came to Chiara, and they said, Chiara, we're so sorry. Baby David isn't gonna be able to live outside of the womb either. And Kiara said, I will give this baby as much life as I can give this baby. And so she carried baby Davide to term, he was born, and just like his sister, about a half hour later, he went back to the hands of his father after being baptized. You wouldn't blame Kiara if after two intense experiences like this, she became a little bitter and a little hard of heart, but Kiara wanted to be open to whatever God wanted to give to her. And so for a third time, Kiara was open to life, and for a third time, she conceived the gift of a child. 
and everything was going so well. Every time they would check in on baby, everything looked perfect. They said, Kiara, your baby is, is perfect. It's wonderful. We're so excited for you. And of course, just like before, Kiara and Enrico were rejoicing at this gift of new life. But about halfway through the pregnancy, the doctors came to Kiara and they said, Kiara, we're so sorry. Your baby is healthy. Your baby is safe. There's nothing wrong with your baby, but it is you that is sick. You see, Kiara had formed a tumor and it was potentially cancerous. And so they began to do what they could to try to eradicate it. And they said, Kiara, listen, if you don't do something more drastic, then you might not be here to celebrate the life of your baby as this baby is growing up. And Kiara said, I don't care what it takes. I am doing nothing to endanger this child. And so she refused certain procedures that could harm her child. And she waited until baby was born, baby Francesca was born, came into this world, and then she began her treatments. But the cancer spread and it spread and it spread. And eventually, about a year after her baby was born, Kiara was on her deathbed. And as she lay there knowing that her time was very short, her husband Enrico came to her. He had this question on his heart that he had been asking for a long time but was too afraid to ask of her. You see, in the Gospels, Jesus had promised that his burden would be sweet and light. And he wanted to know, he wanted to ask. And so he asked his wife, Kiara, is this burden truly sweet and light like our Lord promised? And she smiled and she said, yes, it is very sweet. You see, Kiara, in the midst of great suffering, great pain, had peace. She had joy. And you might look at her life and think, well, where does that even come from? But the reality is this, it didn't come from her. This peace, this joy, it was not from her. She didn't choose it. It was joy that she received. Joy that she received from the Lord. Grace, peace that she received from the Lord. And she herself would admit this. At her funeral during the homily, Father Vito, who was giving the homily, he talked about how Enrico and Chiara and Father would talk about this idea of this greater miracle that was happening in their lives. You see, Chiara talked about how if God miraculously healed her one day, that would be amazing, and she would sing his praises. But before she would sing his praises about the miraculous healing, she said she would first sing his praises about the way in which she gave peace and joy to herself and to her husband in the midst of their trials. You see, here they were suffering greatly, but she talked about how at their home they were at peace, how God provided everything they needed for them, for them to have true peace and true joy. That was Kiara's secret. She knew how to receive. She received the grace from God to live the life that he was asking of her. So where are you at right now? Where are you at? Are you at peace? If you are, then praise God for that. Thank him for that. Thank him for the gift that you have been able to receive grace from him to be at peace. But if you're not, if right now you're struggling, if there are things going on in your life, what I want to challenge you to today is to stop fighting to stop feeling those feelings of, I have to do this myself. I have to pull up my bootstraps. I have to figure out how I'm gonna take care of this on my own and instead receive from the Lord. Receive the grace he desires to give you. If you wanna learn more about Kiara, I invite you to check out my new book, Reveal the Gift, Living the Feminine Genius. And be saints, it's worth it. <laughs>